Coach, if you'd just like to start, uh, start off with some general comments on the game tonight. I thought the, um, the first period for us particularly um, was a little bit measured and vanilla. We didn't have the same jump and desperation I thought we'd come out with, particularly with the fact that we were fighting for a, you know, an NCAA playoff berth. And uh, the second period was a little bit better, uh, not much better. Um, and that's why I made the goaltender change between the second and third to try and give our guys a little bit of a, a different outlook on the, on the third <coughs> period. And, uh, obviously, we, we did a good job coming back from 5-2, but we just, uh, you know, I don't even think it's a goal short. I just think we're like a period short in terms of our energy and our aggressiveness. Uh, questions at this time for Wade McLeod. Jared. Jared Schaffer with the WRB. Wade, I know it's uh, obviously really tough to go out like that, but how much does it mean just for you to get on the ice with your line mates and be able to play in pretty much every game and then finally get that goal, that last goal? How did it feel to get that goal? Um, yeah, that last goal I thought, as soon as I scored, I kind of looked up the clock to see how much time was left, and I think it was like a minute and something left, so I felt good at the time, but it was just too little too late. Jim? Uh, Wade, Jim Conley from U.S. College Hockey Online. Teams play people everywhere, count you out in the first half when you were one, seven, and two or so. Five, two down tonight, three and a half minutes left. I'm sure people do the same. Can you just talk about the, the resolve and the resiliency of this team to, to continue to, to try to claw back? Yeah, um, I think it speaks a lot for our guys in our dressing room. Um, when we started off one, seven, and whatever we were, um, you know, there wasn't really any panic in the dressing room. Everyone. Everyone knew that we could turn the season around. It just took one game at a time, and once we did, um, we kind of went on a roll there. And tonight, too, uh, the bench was really poised. Even when we got that fifth goal, we, we looked at the clock. There was 10 minutes left, and we kept telling each other, there, there's enough time to come back in this game. And we were fortunate enough to get some power plays at the end and pop a couple, but you know, once again, it just wasn't, wasn't enough. Anything final before we over here? Yeah, wait, Jason Mestrano from Huntington News. You know, you played with Stevie and Tyler for a while now. Can you just kind of talk about what it's like to have played with them for so long? And, you know, if, if you'll ever have a little line this, this time, maybe as you guys were. Yeah, I know. Um, we're all really good friends. We live together. Um, playing with each other for the entire year was it, it was definitely nice because we built a lot of chemistry. And uh, tonight at show, we made some good plays out there, I thought. And we all, we all worked hard. And I know if they were here too, they'd say the same thing. We didn't want to attend tonight. Um, so we tried to do everything we could, but, you know, uh, got to give them credit. They're a pretty good hockey team. Anything else final for we? Made your excuse. Thank you. More questions at times for Coach Cronin. Andy? Great. As the penalties wrapped up towards the end of the game, did you feel like you guys didn't take advantage enough of the, the power plays that you got? It seemed like there were quite a few opportunities there. Well, yeah, I did. I, I, I thought the one that uh, the five on three we had that uh, you know I think was Silver took a triple penalty off the face off, sabotaged that one opportunity. You know, four on three is hard to score on. I mean, people think it's there's a lot of open ice up there. It's a it's a difficult power play to score off of. So, um, and I didn't like the way it was it was being managed by the players on the ice, particularly when we called the timeout to get organized. So that that one was probably one we missed. Uh, on the flip side of that, uh, giving up you know three power play goals in a game is, is a recipe for disaster, and um, I was really disappointed with that. I mean, they had to, that goal late in the second period that put them up. I think it was four to two. Was uh, was uh, just a bad overall play of execution and just penalty killing. I mean, then they won the one. They got late in the of that penalty in the third period again with like something like. 12 seconds to go is another kill and go up five to two. So if we had done our job killing penalties, the two power play goals we got would have been enough. Alex in the front. The uh, pin penalty in the second period, what did you see on that call? It seemed like you know, the players were really down. Well, I just told the official, I, I we thought we would get in the power play because Gibbons had rushed down the ice to like it looked like a charging call. So we literally were calling out our power play group. 
And, uh, and we thought it was strange that we had the puck on a two-on-two and we had a delayed call and he blew the whistle. So everybody kind of looked around to see what the call was. It was late in the period. And when I saw Pim go to the bench, I was, then I was more confused because I saw Gibbons go and line him up, you know, a few seconds after he passed it. So I asked uh, the official after the period what happened. He said, I thought you guy put a stick up and they were battling for the puck. And I said, well, I didn't really quite see it the same way, but I was, I think John does a good job. So I, you know, they make mistakes too, whether he thinks it's a penalty or not. And I told him that, that's a big call. That's a call that put us down 4-2 in a semifinal. So, you know, you gotta live with that. John? Craig, what does it say about the depth of your league that the sixth seed plays a national champions 7-6, 7 6 7 7 2 one 5 4 All the games are close, one goal games. Um, I don't know, you know, it's like, um, you know, they say that um, different fighters make great fights, right, in the fight game. Um, for some reason, BC and Northeastern have had pretty good battles, you know, even going back, I think it started my second year at Northeastern. Um, you know, different styles, you know, styles make fights and there's different styles to the way we play and for some reason uh, we have battles with them. Uh, there's a few blowouts, but at the end of the year we're always pretty close in terms of wins and losses. And I, I think that this year has to be attributed to the fact that um, both teams have kind of adapted to the game, you know, whether it's a 7-6 game in the bean pot or a 6-6 game. It's kind of strange, and I was waiting for this game. It's like watching a horse race to see which one was going to start breaking out and see if the other one could keep up. And it looked like they were going that direction clearly at 5-2. And then we caught up, and we just, we just ran out of time. Um, but I think it, it's, a, it's a pretty good sign that the league's healthy. Uh, I really was hoping we'd get to the tournament. I really was. I thought that if we got to the NCAA tournament, you know, as the, you know, the playoff championship here, we, we could have, and that's really easy to say that here at the outside of the tournament looking in, but I think we could have done some damage in the tournament because our team had been through, much, through so much adversity. Uh, you know, that VU series, Ed, you were there, it took some steam out of us. That was a battle, five games in 10 days. But I think uh, if we had just squeezed ourselves into the tournament, we could have done some damage because there was a lot of believability with that group as, as we just uh, represented in his, his talk. Anything final for Coach Cronin? Ben Warner, WRAB. Coach, it's obviously hard to look forward at a time like this, but how does the program and this group of players use this experience to grow next year? Well, I think, you know, like I told him after the game, you know, two years ago we lost to Lowell in a real heartbreak. We lost in overtime after too many men in the ice penalty. And, um, you know, those guys that had that experience, it's, it's a lot easier to go into this tournament, know what the expectation is, what the mechanics of the tournament, and, you know, so, so a lot of the trimmings that go along with being in this tournament are already, you know, been through. So that's, that's a good thing. The other thing is it, it's a measuring stick for where we want the program to go. Three years ago, the tournament ended for us, but we knew we were going to NCAA as a one or two seed. At that point, it was a two seed. This year, we didn't have that. We were desperate to get to get a championship and go. So the young guys can get a sense of what that is. Um, Personnel-wise, we got to find some scoring. I mean, Wade, Tyler, and Stevie scored a lot. It looks like, well, they got the whole team back. Well, we lost a heck of a lot of scoring. So we're going to have to come up with that between now and September. Coach, thank you very much for your time.